Hello, Bromers! <laughs> howdy, howdy. Welcome to But It Was Aliens, the extraterrestrial comedy podcast. Brought to you by two former Mibs. Mib and off together. We have made it out of the Mib headquarters with files upon files of evidence of the extraterrestrial. And we have decided to bring it all to you. Week by week, we take it in turns to bring you a case from these files and determine whether or not it is extraterrestrial or bullshit. Sweet baby Jesus. I'm your host for this week's episode, Granny Moonwalker. Oh, no. And sitting opposite me is the tallest man in the world. Double O, no. This week, though, we are seeing eye to eye as he has managed to get his hands on some Pym tech and has shrunk himself down to our level. Uh. Banned from every sport known to man because he is a cheat code. Probers, I give you Kevin the Grey. <sighs> I feel like I sigh at the start of every episode. You do. Lately. You make it sound like such a chore to be here in your own home. <laughs> this ain't my home. This is the studio. Separate entity. Uh, you live in the towers. You're molded by it. <laughs> I just have to do that. <laughs> you merely adopted the towers. I was born in it. Where's that? Today. Fucked in it. Hold on. We... <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Today, we go back to January 1976. Woo! 29th of January, to be exact. Disco season. Arnold Smith was in Las Vegas. Vegas, baby! Vegas, baby! To promote his country western album, under his artist name, Johnny Sands. Is this an image of him? That is an image of him there for you. He looks... Um, like what you expect a country and western singer to look like? No, not really. More kind of rock and roll -y. He looks, sadly, a bit like Gary Glitter. Do you know what? The whole time I was researching this, I was like, he really looks like someone, but I couldn't remember who the hell it was. You were exactly right. Yeah. Unfortunately for him. Sadly, yeah. Not Gary, obviously, for this guy. Now, I nearly called him Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Gary. And Sandy was heading either home or back to his hotel room after doing the rounds at several radio stations in the area. Rounds. Whoop, whoop. It was around 10 p.m., so it was dark. He had made his way down Blue Diamond Road when he noticed a brightly lit blimp-shaped object overhead. Ooh, airship. He didn't think much of it at first and continued to speed down the road, but then he realised that the strange object was following him. You better run, Sandy. He began to pull the car to the side of the road. Glad he, had, he was strong. As, oddly, his engine began to cut out. Perplexed by the situation, he got out and checked the tank. I'm not sure how that would have worked, considering it's dark. What's he really meant to see? But he did nonetheless. He then went to the bonnet to check under the hood, and as he lifted it up, his eyes were drawn towards the sky. As they would be with an airship above his head, like that airship we covered with the people on top of it. Which one? There have been a couple, to be fair. We had the airship that was it a pastor who saw it. That's in like the one I Guinea bought you. Yeah. Meant. Is it Bill? I uh, Bill. Yeah. Oh, I would say Gates, but I know it's not. I want to say Chalker, who is a figure, but not that figure. You cover too many. Too many. They're so hard to remember. They all mold into one. Past Bill Gates. Olden cars had petrol gauges, didn't they? Just going back to the case. Um, like yeah. He checked the tank. Like, surely if the petrol gauge is saying he's got petrol. Petrol gauge might have broke. Mm. Gotta remember. Yeah. I had a car that would 
all of a sudden the instrument panel would just switch off and die. You didn't know how fast you were going. You didn't know how much fuel was Which in Which one it. was that? Uh, my TT. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just be driving along and then all of a sudden everything goes off. Not a glowing endorsement of that company, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the car would work fine. Like the lights were working. The engine was Just you fine. had to have faith. You just had to kind of realise how fast you were going. <laughs> you got used to it. If the if the road was empty in front of you, that is dangerous as shit. That is the. To be fair, the roads I drove that car on were mainly roads I knew, mm. and you can kind of judge how fast to take corners or how fast not how not to take them. Even how how to take off. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's the last car I had that had a bit of a quirk to it, and by quirk I mean. Could kill you at any moment. <laughs> was absolutely beat up and ready to murder. Had years of abuse and trauma and was looking to <laughs> take some revenge. And quite a lot go wrong with that car. Still one of my favourite cars. <laughs> Above him was the same blimp-like object that was following him. It was directly above him and it was described as 60 foot long and about a thousand feet above him. A large round ring encompassed the middle section and there were also windows along it and on each end were red and white flashing lights. The whole thing was a rusty orange colour. The object didn't stop. It continued on in the same direction that Sandy was originally heading in. As it passed, <laughs> I originally wrote that to make you laugh and then forgot I'd wrote it. <laughs> this is like that Jeffrey Carmel account where you've done this to mess with me or it's a typo. Done it to mess with you and then forgot I'd done it. And it's messed with you. Yep. <laughs> As it passed, it was lighting up the ground and the mountains below. And then it went on to land on the nearby terrain. Once the object had passed over him, the power in his car came back and his headlights lit up the road in front of him. He looked back towards where his headlights were shining and he saw two figures were heading towards him. Thinking he was about to get mugged, he turned back to get into his car, but his legs wouldn't move. Try as he might, his legs just wouldn't move. It'd been zapped. The two figures got closer and closer. One of the figures stopped, but the other kept coming. It became more and more apparent to Johnny that the figure moving towards (laughs) him was not human. Johnny Sands. Oh, I'm so confused. <laughs> he described the figure as having the body of a young man in great physical condition. A physical specimen, if you will. But his face did not match that. His face looked like he was hundreds of years old. What? It was bald and had no eyebrows, no eyelashes and no facial hair at all. No beard, no moustache, no sideburns, no nose hairs. Had jet black eyes with small white pupils, a flattened nose and a small mouth. On each side of its face can only be described as gills, which would move constantly just like a fish. Okay, that's not necessarily... Yeah, I mean, that's just a different mechanism for breathing, isn't it? So Mm -hmm. maybe it's got something similar going on instead of nostrils. Wait, but then you said it had a flattened nose. It did. So it's got a nose and... Oh, maybe it smells out of one. Oh, I can't think of the biology behind this, because if it's taking in air through the nose to smell, then it's also taking air through the gill. What? Oh, this is really... What if one is expelled? 
like maybe yeah maybe expelled. the gills are an outie or, or the, the nose, nose is, is an outie or vice versa mm. smells through the cheeks before you said gills this thing was sounding basically like voldemort <laughs> now, <laughs> now i don't know what to think great <laughs> physical specimen with an old haggard head also, I've got to say, this one took a different path than what I was expecting. When the craft went over them, I thought they were going to get sucked off, but... It didn't. No. So him not Landed sucking and... off, getting sucked off. Yeah. So you pictured Sandy getting sucked off. Yeah, yeah. When the craft was over him, I thought he was going to get sucked off, and then he was in the ship and all sorts of things going on. But actually, he's being approached by two figures after the craft landed. Is this a different species to what we've dealt with before? They don't have that type of capability, perhaps. Who's to say? I mean, if they breathe through their gilly pads. And they have disabled Sandy Johnny's legs. We've heard that before, to be fair, haven't we? What if he's just paralyzed through fear, though? They haven't actually done anything. He's just Could his upper body move? Was it himself. just his legs that wouldn't move? Try as he might. Try as he might. His legs wouldn't move. move. But while at his arms, could he windmill? <laughs> Just picture his arms like doing the running motion, but the legs don't move. It's basically a dance, isn't it? Running man. <laughs> <laughs> Top half at least. Unusual. Well, this creature was wearing a silver bodysuit or overalls with no visible seams. It had a white belt around its waist and a strap that went from shoulder to waist. Venusian. There were silver objects about an inch in length hung from its belt. As it was moving towards him, he noticed that it wasn't walking towards him, but floating towards him oh that's interesting what <laughs> what is this image that that's is... not what i pictured we've got an image of this alien it's a black and white image so you can't really tell the colors too well but it kind of matches the description given a big skull quite human-esque features wrinkly ball mouth but the thing that really catches your eyes, it's basically got fins on either side of its cheek. Um, they're supposed to be the gills, but they are fins. This is like a shark fin on either side of something's face. His mouth looks like a sucked-in butthole, but a line instead yeah, of a puckered like, circle. Yeah, like um, butt face, whatever he's called, from Preacher. Never seen it. We had this conversation before. <laughs> and for some of our other listeners out there, still not seen Stranger Things. Oh my gosh. You're such a disappointment you know as a what? human being. <laughs> Do you know what? What? I'm on a rest day tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I might watch it then. It's not happening. Yeah, you're right. It's probably not. <laughs> but at least I thought about it. Well, you never know. I'll be... Yeah, I'm not going to the gym tomorrow. Yes, we know your leg is hurt. So I will probably still wake up at around quarter to five. Could you just go downstairs, watch a couple of episodes? You could. You'll probably go downstairs and like spend the next six hours working on some Gordon Ramsay-esque creation. The more I look at this creature, like I know you shouldn't judge on appearances, but this thing does look inherently evil. When you look at this image, we'll post this on our Instagram, but it was aliens, I guess, weren't we, Granville? It's the furrow of their brow. Mm. Or the lack like, of I furrow. can't imagine, and that with the ball face and the, the fins, I can't imagine anything in this species looking friendly. If he was to probably smile rather than have that Can kind smile? of death stare puckered lip, Is it he? Then, well, we don't know. If they were to smile rather than have that death stared puckered mouth look, you'd probably get away with looking a little bit friendlier. But yeah, you're going to be on your guard with that yeah, coming towards you. Absolutely. 
Johnny Sands, aka Sandy, had a 10 minute conversation with the being. But we won't hear of any of the details of that conversation at the request of the beings. All right. Sandy, though, was happy to share what they asked him in his answers. And his answers. Yeah, that's convenient, isn't it, old Johnny Sandy? Not going to tell you any of the things that could help to convince you that I was visited, but I'm going to tell you what they asked me, stuff that anyone could know. Mm. F- Sorry? Uh, go ahead. No, I've forgotten now. Okay. The first thing they asked Sandy was what he was doing there. And he oh, answered... Hello there. It's my planet. He was an entertainer and in Vegas to do a show. Oh, yeah. I forgot this was a singer. The being seemed... Happy. Do you reckon what he wouldn't tell is that he gave a performance to them? They said he sucked. (laughs) That's why they left him. (laughs) Fuck off, Johnny. (laughs) The being then asked why so many people come to the city. Sandy answered that many people come to the city for many different reasons. It's not really an answer, is it? Remember, this is Vegas. (laughs) Vegas, baby! Still not an answer, though, is it? The being seemed happy. That being doesn't even have the capability to seem happy. (laughs) It's got an arsehole for a face. What if that's attractive where they're from? Well, it might be, but it doesn't look happy. The more puckered it looks. No human from Earth can perceive that as looking happy. The more wrinkles, the more attractive you are. You're of a higher standing. Still not happy. (laughs) The being asked, what is your means of communication? You're using it as you're asking. Sandy wasn't entirely sure what the being meant, so he answered, we have several types we use. The being interrupted him, telling him to answer the question. (laughs) Exactly, Sandy. You're not given specifics here. Sandy remarked that he wasn't quite sure what the being meant, and with that, The being simply turned and stared at the other being for about two minutes. The being then turned back to Sandy and told him, Don't say anything about this meeting. We know where you are and we'll see you again. Is that a threat or is that like a a nice... (laughs) Well, like, we'll see you again, mate. We don't know. Sandy is a cagey mother trucker, isn't he? Like, naturally suspicious. Why do people come to Vegas? That's nothing personal about Sandy. There's no dodgy Well, he didn't ask why Sandy came to Yeah, that's what I mean. Exactly. Yet Sandy's still like, many reasons. He doesn't give any examples. Surely they're going to want some actual information. But Sandy's like skirting around things and cagey. Makes me suspicious of what Sandy is up to. Johnny Cage. But I don't know why they need to ask what your means of communication is when they're using it to ask what the means of communication is. That seems so very silly. The beings then walked, or rather drifted, back to their craft and with a flash of light, they vanished. According to Sandy, the whole thing took about 10 minutes. From the cutout of the car to the ship vanishing. Once they'd gone, he started his car, which started up first time. Of course it did. And he drove back to Vegas, making a report of the encounter to the Las Vegas Police Department. Mm -hmm. But these guys either didn't want to know or knew immediately that it was above their pay grade. So they sent him to a nearby airbase. The particular airbase was Nellis, and he was sent straight to the Office of Special Investigations. Sandy says that once he was inside, it was immediately apparent that nobody wanted to help him, or they weren't able to. He mentioned speaking to one person, 
who told him that they no longer investigated UFO reports and that no craft or aircraft or blimp appeared on their radar. To them, it was just an ordinary night. Oh, I'm in two minds here because A, they would say that but B, who's to say this airship would appear on radar if it's advanced technology? So is it that they're fobbing off or that they genuinely don't know? Those are two very good points you bring up there, Greybeard. Two very good points. Possibly both. Possibly neither. Office of Special Investigations. Is that like where they film the X-Files? <laughs> what kind... What? What makes an investigation special enough to be investigated there? It's obviously got to be happening frequently enough to warrant its own office. And I'm guessing UFO sightings aren't every night. So there must be more. So what sort of standard thing gets into the office of special investigations? It's another good question you asked there. (laughs) I have no answer. Would it be... Anything involving goop? Something out of... I would say something that cannot be easily explained. Goop. Through, I would say science, but it goes to the police. The police can't solve it. FBI can't solve it. Then it goes to OSI. And they send that guy with the red hair from CSI in. Oh, what's his name? He's the one that's always got to have the fucking last word. Yeah, and six of sunglasses on. Yep. Does he stick them on or does he take them off when he says it? No, he puts them on, doesn't he? Is it her- it's not Horatio. Horatio. Is it Horatio? That's someone from CSI. Oh, I don't know. That might be him. I don't know. But it's yeah, his office. Fuckers always grab the last word. <laughs> Dave Dunn Productions were a TV production company that have a TV series about strange encounters and were in the area at the time. They heard about Sandy's encounter and they wanted him on their show. So they set up a date. February 10th, a few members of the crew and Sandy were out for a meal before going back to the site where it occurred. They were back to film for the show, but once they arrived, they bluntly told him to stay in the car. While some of the crew were outside talking, he said he could hear some of the conversation conversation looked to be getting heated then one of them pointed to him saying he's already heard too much before asking what should they do with him sandy tried to force the door open but he couldn't it was being held from the other side by two figures but he couldn't make them out it was just fuzzy next thing he knew he was back in vegas was it possible that the crew were already out filming in January and it was all part of the show with Sandy unwittingly becoming part of it with the meal being a way of them trying to find out exactly what he saw or did they plan to create a scenario to get a reaction out of him but something went wrong at some point Sandy underwent a lie detector test by APRO investigators who took an interest in the case. He was asked key questions about whether he saw a strange craft, did he really see these strange figures, and did he communicate with them? He answered them all, and the lie detector determined. (laughs) (laughs) Maury... Popovich, was it? <laughs> the lie detector test determined he's telling the truth. <laughs> uh, phenomenal. <laughs> what if this wasn't a TV production company? What if it was the aliens returning as they promised? What if? And that's why, like, one minute he's there, the next minute he was... Back in Vegas. Yeah, back in Vegas and... Hmm. Did you research Dave Dunn Productions? No. It was on my agenda. And then I had work. (laughs) Hmm. So he potentially believes what he's saying. Did he 
dream it? Was Do we know anything about whether he was using substances? Was he having a little confidence boost before his show? Who's to say? Was he trying to draw up some interest because he released music? and First studio album. Don't even know if it was a studio album. First album. Mm, but any media is good media. So they say. Indeed. In different ways. I'm trying to think of why Dave Dunn Productions would be so suspicious saying he's seen too much or whatever it was. If it was just a TV production company, like what other reason could there be for that? Because surely they'd want to hear it all and spread the word. The fact they're making the bloody documentary, they're Taking unless the it was authorities undercover. It was um, that offers a special investigation. <laughs> That's what they do. That's what they do. They masquerade as TV companies to interview people who have seen some paranormal shit. That's how they get the scoop. Scoop on the goop. Now, this is the part of the probe where we turn to science and scepticism. We just did that. APRO also investigated this case, and after speaking with the police, they would learn that Sandy wasn't the only person to report a sighting. They had had several reports from citizens about the craft, and their descriptions matched that of Sandy's. The retelling of what happened when with the crew is taken from a fuzzy Sandy the following day, along with educated guesses. Could he have been drugged? Possibly, but highly unlikely, as Sandy did admit that he had drunk quite a bit the night he was eating out with the crew. (laughs) Sandy also wasn't only a musician, but was previously... A stuntman. What? Stuntman? Was this just a stunt? Ooh. D- <laughs> he's, on, he's on fire! Is that actually Sandy or is that just a stunt? It's actually Sandy. Bloody hell. Cool. Lived that Vegas lifestyle. Showbiz. Hmm. Oh, what was I just about to say? Shit, it's completely gone from my memory. Did this chap have a background of drinking they sound he drank quite a bit the night he was eating out with the they've done production crew we do not know he could we can't rule it out i guess hmm. but the aliens never came back as they promised they would not that we know of unless they did but we don't know were they the Office of Special Investigations. That's that's them all along. <laughs> Their special investigations is investigating humans. Do I oh know what I was going to ask? Do we have any of the other accounts from people who saw the blip in the sky? Nope. Damn it. Damn it. So to summarise, we have the case of musician and ex stuntman Johnny Sands, who was in Vegas promoting his new album when he was driving back home when he noticed a blimp-like object in the sky. Shortly after his car cut out, he got out to look and when opening the bonnet, he noticed the object directly above him. Stuntman, you could call him Danger Hands. As it passed him, he watched it and it lit up the ground and mountains nearby before landing in the desert terrain. Once it had passed him, His car regained power and his lights came back on. He was drawn to where the object landed, and as he looked that way, within the beam of his lights, he saw two figures heading towards him. He had a conversation with one of them before being threatened not to talk about it. But he did talk about some of the things they asked him. Once they left, he went straight to to the police but got sent to the local airbase, but got no help there. He was contacted by a TV production company and asked to film some stuff for their TV show, which didn't happen. Something funky happened, and it's possible he was drugged or he just drunk too much and doesn't fully recall his experience with the crew. At some point, he was polygraphed by APRO, who believed that he was telling the truth. So, Greybeard, do you believe that Sandy was telling the truth, or did he just get sand in his vagina? Well, he got sand in his vagina, didn't he? 
what uh, there isn't enough evidence to say that this was aliens so i'm not saying that it was aliens Boom. but hey. <laughs> <laughs> what i'm struggling to gauge is the honorable and trustworthy meter of sandy johnny is johnny full of it or does johnny believe sandy i don't have the answer and that makes it really hard to form further opinions like i say there's certainly not enough to determine that this was aliens or in fact that this was anything we don't have any corroborating evidence we don't have the other accounts we don't have evidence that there were or were not things in the sky that night we don't have a character study what happened to this guy do we know that um unfortunately he has now passed away well, it was a while ago away yeah. in 2015 okay did he have any bangers hits not, not music that i'm aware of no uh, i wonder what he ended up doing with his um, life I think when you look him up, it goes to his Facebook page. Mm. And then, like, I think all his musical things have, like, 46 likes. Oh, bless. Like <laughs> Never mind. But that was me just kind of skim. Yeah, well, looking. maybe they sabotaged his life to make sure no one believed him. Possibly. I'm not saying they did. So but do maybe you they him? did. Well, no, absolutely not. That would be preposterous absurd for me johnny sands is an entertainer from stuntman musician yeah and someone that saw aliens i think it's all part, of, his part of a show part of an act and i think it was a way to drum up interest mm -hmm. in the other things that he was doing to kind of keep his name not necessarily alive but if you were to look up UFOs and you saw that story, you'd be like, oh, I'll look him up and then you find out what else he does and just another way for people mm. to know who he is. Yeah. So, unfortunately for him, I do not believe that this is aliens. I reckon he's turning his grave here and that. He's doing a what? backflip on a motorbike while on fire. Thank you for joining us for this week's Probe. You can find us on all socials under But It Was Aliens. That's Instagram, Facebook, and on oh, no, Twitter, now known as X. We also have a Facebook group called Extraterrestrial Towers, where you can find like-minded individuals and mummy memes. Don't tell anyone, but also tell all your friends. If you would like Shh. more outside of the extraterrestrial, you can find us on Patreon. Dot com. Forward slash But It Was Aliens where we cover pirates, Yarr! reincarnation, psychic dogs, phantom dogs, and peggers. <laughs> I have God, been Moonwalker. Peggers. <laughs> and he, until it stops getting that reaction from you, I'm not going <laughs> to. And he is Greybeard. But you just don't hear pegging every day, do you? It's not exactly <laughs> a common... <laughs> Depends what circles you're in. <laughs> what, peg, <laughs> what pegs you're in. Peg circle. Remember, the truth is up there. Hash tag pro. <laughs> <laughs>